good morning good afternoon i am uh, speaking in uh, from singapore and this is a timing when uh, the perfect uh, thunderstorms uh, come and uh, if there is a background noise uh, thunderstorms uh, uh, my apologies i can't do much about it um so i hope uh, everybody is uh, doing well and safe and uh, pari thanks for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on this topic of uh, ambidextrous leadership um in on this call obviously there are many great uh, leaders running great companies which are much larger have, and have been in business for a much longer time and uh, quest is a very small and young company uh, so i'm quite uh, humble to be here to share my thoughts uh, based on uh, limited knowledge that i have accumulated uh, building this uh, business uh, but thanks thanks for the opportunity so if we go to next slide uh, um uh, I, i ask a question you know each one of you are you left handed right handed or ambidextrous um according to research apparently 90% of the people are uh, right handed and uh, only about 10% are uh, left handed and ambidextrous people are very rare um so it's uh, just like less than 1% of the people are uh, ambidextrous and some there is some genetic reasons behind it something to do with the hemispheres of our uh, brain why we are wired in that way uh, but uh, uh, 90% of the people are uh, right handed and uh, interestingly the research also they have found out that uh, the iq of the people who are left handed and uh, right handed is about the same um and uh, apparently the people who are ambidextrous have apparently lower iq uh, especially in mathematics reasoning and memory so that means you really don't want an ambidextrous uh, mind leading your company it's better to be a left handed or a right handed uh as a person so in the context of business i will try to see you know how do we define that um ambidexterity uh, so really ambidextrous it means it's a yin and a yang thing you know so i think we all agree in business uh, results come from our actions and those actions uh, emanate from our thoughts so that means the thought has to come before Uh, uh actions so what matters then is how do we think right so how does a ambidextrous person thinks so if we were to think about uh, you know classifying two kinds of thinking so i kind of divide this whole thought process of uh, uh, our thoughts into two buckets one on the left side you can see are like uh people who talk about investing in innovation you know adapt and changing big the world is going to change drastically so let's change now you know they are very entrepreneurial uh they are thinking about the revenue growth they are visionaries they want to roll up their sleeves they want to get involved they are impatient they are intuitive so they are there like these are some of the characteristics of individuals and then you also find on the other hand some characteristics people have which people who look for the stability you know they plan before they change um they are uh, mechanistic they pursue the margin growth the cutting the cost uh they are tops down and they are uh, hierarchical in nature you know command and control kind of a thing and they are thoughtful and then they reason so you find people of different kinds and it is usually it is hard to find people who are doing both at the same time you know so i have i have not come across a whole lot of people who think in the same two uh, same two uh, mindsets and uh, generally i've seen people who are either on the left uh, or on the right and uh, and whether we admit it or not ambidextrous means having the ability to do both at the same time and uh, and those are the rare skills to find so what does being ambidextrous mean you know so ability to hold these diametrically opposite thoughts in uh, one's mind and uh, being self aware about your own dominant logic by which you make decisions and then building the systems that are actually ambidextrous and uh, and i think about uh, ambidexterity is a uh, more like that where uh, uh, you may have a dominant logic 
which is not necessarily having both the competencies at the same time, but knowing, uh, being self-aware, and then kind of building the systems that are ambidextrous in nature. And, uh, and I think um, uh, the companies who are long-term businesses, you know, there are many great companies on this uh, call today uh, who have been, you know, built into great companies over like many decades, I'm sure the systems that are embedded in your organizations have that ability to innovate on one end and on the other hand, uh, significant uh, having that discipline uh, to maintain the cost and um, the rigor uh, at the same time. Um, and can we think of a company in our recent times that has uh, done a phenomenal job, not only to innovate, but uh, superbly executing at the same time. And, uh, and needless to say, it's an amazing brand that I don't need to make any introduction, but, uh, uh, but clearly Apple is uh, one of the examples where they have done this phenomenally well, right? So we know uh, uh, that uh, Steve, Steve Jobs, you know, so we know him via movies and the books and the videos, and uh, he was an inventor, you know, so he, he, he was somebody that is a visionary, wanted to change things, change the world and get into the details. Um, he was like that. And uh, uh, obviously he didn't build the company by himself. So he built around him uh, equally capable people who knew how to build systems uh, methodically and, uh, and, uh, and, and share a common vision uh, to build a great uh, company that makes the world better. So I think this having a team which has the ability to do both, I think is what ambidextrous uh, uh, leadership means, is like you know building the system that is uh, needed. And I do think every business needs this. Uh, every business to succeed has to be able to constantly innovate. Uh, it needs to adapt and change to the environment around us. Um, and especially in uh, today's time, uh, as uh, one of the speakers uh, rightly spoke, you know, what happens in two years is happening in two months. And uh, how do you rapidly change uh, to accommodate it? And I think uh, businesses have to have that ability to understand uh, how to manage uh, both of these things at the same time. And in my opinion, a person may not be ambidextrous. Um, again, based on the research that very few people are like that. Uh, but uh, I do think every individual has the uh, ability to leverage uh, the competence of uh, people who are not like them and bring them together uh, to build that ambidexterity uh, to be successful uh, in, in life. And, and, and I, think, uh, uh, I think that's what is required to be, uh, you know, being very successful in the business. And here is uh, some thoughts I have about, uh, you know, how do you groom yourself uh, to become an ambidextrous leader uh, in a company? Um, think of these elephants, you know, so you find elephants in a temple yard in uh, South India. Um, and uh, often these elephants uh, that are, you know, one of the most uh, powerful animals to walk on the planet, uh, they are standing in the, in, in the yard. But then how does, and it is tied with a small rope or a chain. And uh, how do you, how do you, how does this elephant become what it becomes? Is actually through training, there's a small elephant, which, uh, which is tied with a small rope. And over a period of time, it, it tries to run away, but over a period of time, it uh, settles, saying that uh, it can't run away. So it has uh, built its, uh, the brain wiring accepts that that's what its uh, uh, norm is. And then it stays. And over a period of time, it grows. It grows big. It has the ability to even take down uh, a, a truck, but, uh, but it is uh, standing there in a, in a very tamed way uh, and become uh, what it is. So I think uh, we as human beings are also, in a way, uh, have the similar habits. You know? So we uh, have our biases. Either we are left-handed or right-handed, uh, the, the characteristics which I talked about. And uh, over a period of time, we gravitate towards those uh, biases and that dominant logic becomes uh, stronger and stronger with the time and, uh, and create a comfort zone. And I think 
once you are in that comfort zone it's very difficult for you to uh, get out of it unless you make a conscious effort uh, to build the other side or to appreciate the other side and uh, um and i see that you know the people and there's no right or wrong about which side is uh, uh, which side is right uh, there is nothing wrong about it i think people just have the biases but it's what is important to become an ambidextrous leader is to be self aware i think that self awareness of what is your really the the core who you are and accepting it and then uh, building the complementary teams either colleagues that uh, you work with or you want changing the jobs to go out of your comfort zone and taking on this other side which is not really your strongest and uh, obviously it leads you to many more uh, lessons and uh, um, and success may not be that easy to come by because you are kind of exploring going beyond your uh, core and uh, and i think to be ambidext to become an ambidextrous leader uh, i think the both uh, both the things are needed um, in my opinion and so how do you groom your leadership skills i think number one thing is being self aware um and uh, and knowing that you know uh, and i have seen this people you know do things but knowing who really you are i think is extremely important in my opinion and uh, and in my case for example i am a little bit more like a left handed guy and that's my core competence and uh, the people who can do the operational things you know is not really something that i can do um uh, very easily and it's not a natural uh, skill for me so i'm always surrounded by people like that and once you have people like that then you have to respect their views you have, you are, they will say things that are uh, doesn't make sense to you uh, but you still have to accommodate that and then how do you bring that balance uh, between the two i think uh, what makes uh, uh, what makes things happen so <clears throat> being self aware of your uh, the thinking number one second is uh, also building a system level view and a system level view means you must be able to see the big picture from a standpoint of you know going from order to cash what all it takes uh, because ultimately the business sees that one end you service a client's need but then on the other end uh, you take it all the way to make sure that the business is sustainable so i i think developing that whole system level view is uh, another important one uh, and often i see people are exceptionally good at executing a function but they not necessarily develop themselves into having that system level view um and uh, and i think once you have that you uh, uh, start to appreciate what really it takes uh, to do the whole thing and uh, and the third thing is like working with the people who are unlike you and i see this you know many times entrepreneurs small businesses they are great at thinking big changes and always changing things but on the other hand they don't necessarily have a lot of respect for the people who are more systems and uh, structure guys and it's other way around too uh, the people who are systems and structure they have to make room for the people who are uh entrepreneurial and uh, want to change things you know who are thinking what is the next big thing so i think the building both of that at the same time is uh, what is uh, what makes uh, an ambidextrous uh, leader so this is my uh, final slide just to give you a sense of uh, my own journey building the uh, the company and what i have uh, learned over the years so quest is uh, th this chart in the x axis is like a 100 year 100 years on this chart uh and as i said earlier you know there are many great companies on this call people who are managing great leaders uh managing the large businesses businesses who have been there for a long period of time so quest is a small and a young company uh but our uh, uh, you know so what i've tried to do over the last uh, 23 years is uh, to build that ambidexterity within the organization um uh, of uh, making sure that uh, we have um uh balance in the business and uh, to groom the 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 next generation of leaders um who see the difference being uh, on one end being very humble to accept that we don't necessarily know uh, all the things but also being uh, very hungry to execute um so i think that balance of uh, humility and hunger uh, is uh, absolutely something that uh, we seek within our company and uh, we think big 
on the one hand, but we act small as well on the other hand. You know, so I have a desire to build a centenary company, but I want to make sure that there is enough cash to pay all the salaries of the people. And this is uh, this has been there from the very beginning. You know, so we started uh, with the credit card. Um, so I had to make sure that everybody gets a paychecks end of two weeks. Um, uh, company started in America where the paychecks are given every two weeks. So I think ability to think long term, but at the same time, uh, short term, uh, we think, uh, you know, when we're interacting with the customers, we are locally, we're acting, but uh, then we have a global presence. You know, we have empowered people, but uh, we hold people accountable. You know, we have diversity, uh, but uh, we are all united with the common purpose and uh, uh, values. So I think ability to hold diametrically opposite thoughts in the mind and the company systems and having a culture to promote that uh, unity over a long time, I think is what makes companies great. Um, um, so with that, uh, I will pass it back to you. Um, thank you very much for your attention and uh, thank you. Thank you.